So again, this week is entirely based on midterm review and we will review when you come back next Tuesday as well. So your midterm, again, you can use the calculator for every single part of that. Your midterm counts as 50% of your final exam. So it does not count as a separate test grade in here. It's just, again, 50% of your final exam. Your final exam is not cumulative, meaning your final exam material will start with chapter seven. So final exam is just gonna be chapter seven through 12. Midterm only covers one through six. Is that clear? Okay. As you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask but your midterm will take place in class beginning next Wednesday. So you'll have one part next Wednesday, one part next Thursday, and one part next Friday. So you will not have to come in for midterm week for any math exam. Usually we do, but they really wanted to limit the number of exams they were administering that week. And they kind of asked us to spread them out and do some of them in class instead. So you guys will do your starting next Wednesday. But again, separate test each day that you walk in. So today I wanna to go through sheet number one. So you're gonna want sheet number one in front of you as well as your formula sheet and calculator. And again, all those formulas on your sheet you are permitted to use. So I'll kind of flip back and forth and make sure you can see them. All right, so I'm gonna start right at the top here. And if you need extra paper to write some of these out because it's kind of smushed, then that's no problem either. And question number one kind of has like a slight little typo in it. So I really want it to say this. It should say f of g of x. I'm not sure if yours copied like that or not. I don't think it did, did it? Okay, so if you can please add that on. So what you want to do with this particular example is this is a composition. So you are going to start right here on the inside, and you are going to replace that as the x is the x. So your g of x, so all of this is going to get substituted right here where we see x. Okay. And this goes all the way back to chapter one. So your review does go in the order that we get the material in. So I am going to do here f of g of x. And algebraically, that's going to be equal to, so I'm going to go 10 divided by, and I'm trying to write small so that you can fit all this if you want to. And then I'm going to place that x in there. So I'm going to go x divided by, and then you're going to have 2x plus 3. So when you have the division, you're going to do keep change flip. I'm going to go over here, use some of this space. I'm going to write keep change flip. This is a verbal prompt for you to remember what we did. And I'm going to go 10 over 1 gets multiplied by flip it 2x plus 3 over x. And then all you need to do is multiply those right across. Right across. No. All right, so this, if you distribute it through, you would have a 20x plus 30, and then all over x. And that's it. That's as far as you can go with this one. Any questions on number one? Okay. Number two, you need to find an inverse. So find an inverse, you're going to immediately switch f of x to y equals, and then you're going to switch your x and y values. I'm going to do this to begin. Then you don't have to keep recopying and everything. And then you're going to switch x and y. So this is x is equal to, I have 2y squared minus 3. And then your task is to solve this for y equals. So you're going to take your 3, add it over. So I have x plus 3 equal to, and I have 2y squared. And you're going to divide by 2. Divide by two. Come up here where you got a little bit of space. So you have x plus three 
all over two equal to y squared. And how are we going to get that y by itself? What's the last thing we need to do? Yep, take the square root. Make sure that you attach plus and minus on the front. In addition, when you draw your square root, make sure that it does encompass the whole fraction, including the two. So my answer, so I'm going to go f inverse x is equal to plus and minus, and then big square root, so you can put the entire fraction beneath it. So I have x plus 3 all over 2. Any questions on those first two? Okay, again, we're viewing for you. So take any opportunity you need to and make sure you're asking questions. So number three, I believe this is right on your formula sheet. Did you take a glance at your formula sheet? Did I include the point school form on there? <laughs> yes. So if you look right on your formula sheet and you look at the second formula down, that is point slope form. So you are permitted to use that on your exam. You don't have to memorize that, which is very nice of us. So I need to write that for you. So in order to plug into point slope form, what do we first have to find? The slope, yep. But so m and then this is x minus x1. So my slope, I'm gonna come off to the side here and say m is equal to, and I'm gonna go y2 minus y1. And then this gets divided by x2 minus x1. And you're going to substitute into this. So your slope is equal to our y2 value is 4. And I'm going to go 4 minus negative 3. And then I'm going to divide that by change in x, which is 2 minus 7. So my slope is equal to 7 over negative five, which is just negative seven six. When you get to the next part, you have a choice. You are permitted to use the first point or the second point, whichever one you favor. You got to bring the second point to the easier. Yeah, there's no negatives in it. So I would kind of steer you towards that. So my resulting answer is just y minus four is equal to negative seven six times the quantity x minus two. And because it does say to leave this in point slope form, you would be incorrect if you went any further. So you have to stop right there. Now part B is to continue this into slope intercept form, and that is where you have to solve it for y equals. So here I would continue and go y minus four is equal to negative seven fifths x and plus 14 fifths. And then lastly, you're going to add that four over. So plus four plus four. I'm going to use the calculator. And you have a 14 fifths added to four mass enter enter fees. So your answer is just y equal to negative seven fifths x. And plus 34 over 5. Any questions there, or was that fairly easy? Mm -hmm. Casey, go ahead. Yep. Uh huh. Yes, you can. Yep, you can use either point. It makes no difference whatsoever. Yeah, you know, whatever point you prefer. Um, so letter C. Now you need to do standard form. Standard form is on your formula sheet. It is our fact, and you can either set it equal to the constant or you can set it equal to zero. But what distinguishes it is that it cannot have fractions. So standard form, if you can make a little note here, no fractions permitted. So no fractions. So I am going to get x and y on one side, constant on the other, or you can just get the whole thing equal to zero. So let's go, I'm going to add that over. So I would have a 7 fifths x plus y equal to 34 over 5. 
And then how do I clear the fractions? What do we have to multiply through by? Go see it. Five. We're going to multiply everything by five. We can leave it at that. So I have a seven x, and then plus five y equal to thirty four. If you prefer, you can move your thirty four over, and you can go seven x plus five y minus thirty four equals zero. Okay, so either is acceptable. You feel good down to letter T? Okay. Remember letter B. Write an equation of a line that is perpendicular. What did you have to remember about perpendicular from years past? Slope is negative reciprocal. That's okay. So slope, you're thinking parallel. Slope is going to be a negative reciprocal for perpendicular. So I need to go up and find my slope and then flip it. Our slope was negative, yeah, you, negative seven six. So I'm gonna go m is equal to positive five over seven if I flip it and change my sign. Then I'm gonna use the point nine negative five. And your task is to write an equation. You will notice it does not say what form. So I'm permitted to just leave this in point cult form if you want. So I'm gonna go y minus y1 equal to m and then x minus x1. So we're gonna go y plus five is equal to, and I have my slope, which is five over seven, multiplied by x minus nine. Again, that's an equivalent equation. So if you want to leave it at that, that's fine. If you want to take it to slope intercept, that's possible as well. Okay, so question four, we're going to change gears into matrices. As I stated before, you are permitted to use your graphing calculator. So on number four, I'm going to let you just do it on the calculator. Let's just check and make sure it is possible first before you type everything in. So what is the order of the first matrix? How many rows, how many columns? Three by two, yeah. This is a three by two matrix. And then this is a two by three. So the middle numbers, do they match? Yep, yeah. therefore multiplication is possible and your resulting matrix would be a three by two. So now you're gonna continue and you're gonna type this in the calculator. So if you're gonna continue in the calculator, you are gonna hit second matrix. Bear with me because I wanna type this in with you. Just in case you forgot. So I'm gonna go second matrix over to edit. And I'm gonna put mine in number three just because I have other questions stored in the others. And I need to type this in as a three by two matrix. Again, you can enter it wherever you'd like. And I need to enter here, the negative three, two. And then five, zero, six, negative one. And then six and then negative one. All right, now I need a second matrix. So I'm gonna go second matrix. I'm going to place this one in D for me just because again, I have other entries. And this is a two by three matrix. And this I'm gonna type three, negative two, one. Followed by second row is two, five, zero. All right, I'm gonna go back to my home screen and I'm gonna multiply matrix C for me times matrix D. And solution. All right. So you have that resulting three by three matrix, which is all you need to write on your paper for this one. Okay. I know there were a couple of questions on the other column that did say, you know, without the calculator, show this. So we'll kind of get to that. All right. So here's my resulting answer nice square three by three matrix. Again, if it was not possible, you would just say not possible. All right. So my answer became first column 
was negative 5, 16, and 16. Second column was 16, negative 10, negative 17. Lastly, was negative 3, 5. As I'm sure you remember from chapter two when we did it, these took a long time to do by hand. So that's why, again, you're permitted to use your calculator. Everyone got on board? Perfect. Second column. So back up to number five here. Give me one second. Fix that. All right. So number five says to solve the system of equations algebraically using either substitution or elimination. So because these are written x on top of y, I'm going to do this one with elimination. So we have a 3x plus a 2y. Yeah, I know it's hard to see that other side, but we've got equal to 5. And then my second equation is a negative 5x minus a 3y equal to negative 6. Choice is up to you. You have to eliminate either x or y. What do you guys prefer? The y? Sure. So I'm going to take the 3 and the 2. You can take them and flip them. So multiply this one by 3, multiply this one by 2. Make sure that you distribute your value all the way through this. So I have 9x plus 6y is equal to 15 negative 10x minus 6y equal to negative 5. And I'm left with negative x equal to 3. So x is equal to negative 3. Okay, where you down here, you have to continue this type of question. Continue. So lastly, you go and you find the y. It does not matter which equation you use. I would probably lean towards the first one. There's no negatives. So I'm going to go 3 multiplied by negative 3 plus 2y is equal to 5. And you're going to continue. So I have negative 9 plus 2y is equal to 5. Add your 9 over, and I get 2y is equal to 14. Lastly, y is equal to 7. And then for this part, you're going to list your answer as an ordered pair, negative 3, 7. All right, how do we feel with the system algebra? Mm -hmm. These need to be listed as an ordered pair. Good question, but yes, list that is an ordered pair versus this one, 5B. This one says using matrix equations, so this has to be listed as a matrix when you are done. So using matrix equations, so I'm going to get this set up here. So your first matrix using the coefficients, so from above, I am going to grab here, my coefficients were 3, negative 5, I'm looking right at the top of my problem, 2, negative 3, and then I need to multiply this by x and y, and this is going to be equal to, um, on the side there you had 5 and negative 6. Bless you. So the rule is you're going to do 1 over the determinant. So my determinant is found by taking the product of my major diagonal, so three times negative three is, I'm sorry, um, negative nine, and then minus negative 10 becomes plus. Okay, so there's your determinant. I'll clean that up in a second. Then you're gonna <coughs> take your matrix and you're gonna multiply these. You guys remember what you had to do with that first matrix? Flip in the eight, very good. So you're going to flip the major diagonal. So it becomes negative 3, positive 3. And then your minor diagonal gets negated. So it becomes 5, negative 2. Again, you are permitted to use your graphic calculator. So at this point, what I would have you do is type these into your calculator. Okay. 
get a two by two multiplied by a one by two. So you would type that in. This determinant right here is just one. And then we're going to get this resulting problem. So type it in just like you did before. When you type in those matrices, you are going to have a result of negative three and then seven. My determinant was just one, so there's nothing more you need to do with this. And then here is how you state the final answer. So we are going to say that negative three, seven is equal respectively to X and Y. So when you are solving using a matrix equation, that is how your final answer needs to be written, as opposed to the question above where it's listed as a How's 5B? Is that okay, guys? It's been a little bit of time, so it's probably just remembering procedure, which is why we were due. Um, next, find the values of x and y for y. So my corresponding entries. My 9 corresponds with the negative 5x, so I'm going to start right there. And then I'm going to divide the negative 5 over. So divide that over. So we know that x is equal to negative 9 over 5. Then you're going to take that resulting answer and work with it further. So I continue. I have 7x is equivalent to 3y. And you're going to replace the x with what you just found. So 7 times negative 9 fifths. And that is equal to 3 times y. So I have negative 63 over 5 equal to 3y. And then you're going to divide by 3. And I would recommend just typing that right in the calculator. What is negative 63 fifths divided by 3? Yes, thank you. Negative 21 over 5 is correct. So y is equal to negative 21 over 5. All right, so my x value was negative nine fifths. And my y value was negative 21 over five. You can just list your answers just like that with the matrix. Okay, answer number seven. What is number seven asking you to do with that notation? You're so close, not just try it, but so, so close. Determine it, yes. No, everything sounds the same. This is a determinant question. It does say without the calculator. So I'm going to go through this by hand first with you. And then you could, of course, check it. So determinant. So to do my determinant, the pattern always goes plus, minus, plus. Minus, plus, minus. And then plus, minus, plus. We discussed that there's sometimes a nice row to pick here. It makes it a little bit easier to do. Would you guys agree the second row has a zero in it? So that would be technically the easiest one to use. So what you do is you take the seven and you make it negative. And then you are going to cross off mentally the row in the column that the seven falls into. So cross it off, cross it off. You are left with six, one, two and three. On to the next one. Wouldn't you agree it's just zero? So zero. There is no need to write that multiplication out. That one's done. Negative negative five becomes plus five. And then I'm going to cross off that respective row and column that the five belongs to. And what I'm left with is negative four, 12, and then six and one. Almost there. You're going to do the determinants and then add these together. So I would have here negative seven and then 18 minus two. The zero is insignificant. I'm not going to write it. And then I'm going to go negative four minus 72. And at this point, I don't need to see any more work. Mm -hmm. Why is it 18 minus two? Because six times three is 18. 
Which one of those always minus? Yep, good question. Yep, it's always minus in the middle there. So then at that point, again, you can type that in the calculator. This is sufficient work if it actually to show it. And that answer results is negative 492. I'm actually going to go through how to find the calculator because number eight when I do on the calculator anyway. So number seven on the calculator to check yourself. We need to do a determinant. So you're going to enter this matrix again. So second matrix. I'm going to place this one in number five just so I have, so I don't have to delete anything. And we are going to go a three by three for this. Remember, you can only calculate the determinant of a square matrix. And I'm going to go negative four, six, and two. So negative four, six, and two. And the next row is going to be seven, zero, negative five. And my last row, I would enter is 12, one, three. And then you're gonna put out of the screen back to your home screen. And you're gonna go second matrix over to math. And your determinant is choice one. So you're going to grab matrix that you typed it into, which in my case was matrix E. Again, wherever you typed it. And then you're going to go ahead and hit enter. So your answer should match. Any difficulty on the calculators? Okay. Again, you're permitted to use them, so you might as well. And lastly, number eight does not specify that you can't use the calculator. So this one, I'm going to just go right to it. So we need to calculate the inverse. This is a two by two matrix. So another square matrix. So I am going to enter this one into, um, I'll put it in F. If you want to clear your matrices at some point, all you have to do is just reset your calculators, which I'll have you do before your midterm anyways. So I'm going to change this to a two by two matrix and just calculate an inverse. So we have eight, negative five, seven. And last entry is going to be the negative 12. And then I'm going to do the inverse. So I'm going to go back to my home screen. I'm going to grab matrix F where I typed mine. And then I'm going to do the inverse, which is right here. And then you're going to hit math, enter, enter. Okay. And then that is your resulting answer. Everybody get those okay? And do not write those decimals on your test, please. I need to see the fractions instead. So final answers are right there. And then that's it on those. All right, so back over here. Again, on the calculator, you don't have to show anything. How does everyone feel with those so far? Okay. So let's talk about what I'd like you to work on your last five or so minutes. So tomorrow the plan is to go through review sheet number two. So that's also in your packet. So you can certainly take the time right now and get started on some of those just to have um, a chance to look at them ahead of time. You also have a Delta Math review assignment for this week. So I'm not checking it until Friday morning. So you can kind of start plugging away at those problems. So that assignment is due at 9 a.m. But again, that is the only assignment I am checking for you this week. You know what you need to do to study and prepare. So again, each day, make sure you're studying the material we have just done and you know your final, I'm sorry, not your final exam, but your midterm rather starts next Wednesday. Questions on any of those? So again, I'm not checking anything until Friday in which I'm just gonna check to make sure you've completed that big Delta math assignment. 
do not wait until the last minute because obviously it has a lot of questions in it. Okay. But you've got five minutes to start working on either of those two items. <laughs> 